video is a review of unit 12 for the test. In unit 12, we did area of two dimensional figures and area and volume of three dimensional figures. So in number one, we have find the area of the shaded region. A side of this is 12, which means the other side is going to be 12 because it's making two diameters going either way. So they have to be the same length. Then if we look at the two diameters, we know that that means the diameters are six and we split that in half, so the radius of the circle is three. So we want the area of the square minus four times the area of the circle. So remember that the area of the square is base times height minus the area of four circles, which is pi r squared. So we have 12 times 12 minus four times pi three squared. So we get 144 minus 36 pi inches squared. In number two, find the area, the perimeter of the rhombus is 52. So if the perimeter of the rhombus is 52, we can take 52 and divide by four. So each side of the rhombus has to be 13. That will help us get our diagonals. So we already know one diagonal is bisected into five and five, so it has a length of 10. We need to find the other diagonal. So if we do Pythagorean theorem, because we know that this is a right triangle, we have 13 squared equals five squared plus x squared. 169 equals 25 plus x squared. 144 is equal to x squared, so x is 12. So we know that this diagonal is bisected into 12 and 12. So to get our area of a rhombus, it is equal to 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. So 1 half, one diagonal is 10, the other one is 24, and we add those pieces. And when we multiply, we get 120 meters squared. In number three, the area of a triangle is 50 meters squared. If the base has a length of 20 meters, what is the height of the triangle? So to get the area of the triangle, it is one half base times height. So we have 50 equals one half times 20 times the height. Half of 20 is 10, so 50 equals 10 H. So when we divide, we get five, so our height is five meters. In number three, we want to find the surface area and the volume of an isosceles trapezoid. So to find the surface area, it is the lateral area plus the area of two bases. So to get our lateral area, remember it's perimeter times height plus the area of two bases. So if our base is an isosceles trapezoid. That means the legs are both 13. So our perimeter, we need to add 21 plus 13 plus 11 plus 13. So we get a perimeter of 58. The height is gonna be 14 plus the area of two bases. Well, to get the area of a trapezoid, it's one half base one plus base two, so 11 plus 21 times the height of the trapezoid, which is 12. So we have 58 times 14, which is 812. And then we're gonna do one half times 11 plus 21 times 12 times two, which gets us 384. And when we add those together, we get the total surface area as 1,196 meter squared. To get our volume, it's the base area times the height. So the base area is one half times 11 plus 12 times, or plus 21 for the two bases, times 12 times the height of the prism, which is 14. So we have 192 times 14, which gets us 2,688 meters cubed. In number four, we want to find the surface area and the volume of a cylinder. So the surface area and the volume are the same equations as with the prism. So the surface area is lateral area plus two bases. Your lateral area is perimeter times height plus the area of two bases, which is pi r squared. 
Remember, in a circle, your perimeter is your circumference. We have 2 pi 9 times the height of 8 plus 2 pi 9 squared. So 2 times 9 times 8 is 144 pi. And then 9 squared is 81 times 2. It's 162 pi. So we add those together. We get 306 pi feet squared. Volume is the base area times the height. So the base area is pi 9 squared times the height of 8. So we get 81 pi times 8. So it's going to be 648 pi feet cubed. Number five, find the surface area of the cone. So your surface area or total surface area of the cone is the lateral area plus one base. Your lateral area is one half perimeter times height plus the area of the base. So to get the perimeter, we would have 2 pi 24. We don't know the slant height yet, so we're going to take a break and we're going to do Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 18 squared. x squared equals 18 squared plus 24 squared. So we get x squared equals 900. So x is 30 as our slant height. Plus the area of the base, which is pi 24 squared. So when we multiply 1 half times 2 times 24 times 30, we get 720 pi plus 576 pi. So when we add those together, we get 1,296 pi inches squared. In number 6, we want to find the surface area and the volume of the pyramid. So your surface area is just like the cone. It's lateral area plus 1 base. So one half perimeter times slant height plus the base. So in this case, we know that our perimeter is going to be four sides of 32, which is 128 times the slant height, which is 20, plus the area of the base, which is 32 times 32. So we get 1,280 plus... 1,024, and when we add those together, we get 2,304 feet squared. Volume is one-third base area times height. So we have one-third, the base area is 32 times 32. To get our height, we know that half of the side is 16, so we're going to take a break and do Pythagorean theorem. 20 squared equals 16 squared plus x squared. 400 equals 256 plus x squared. 144 equals x squared, so x is 12. So our height is 12, so when we multiply 32 times 32 times 12 times a third, gets us 4,096 feet cubed. In volume of a sphere with a diameter of 18 millimeters. So if it's got a diameter of 18, that means it has a radius of 9. Surface area is 4 pi r squared. So we have 4 pi times 9 squared. And that's going to give us 324 pi millimeters squared. Your volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, so we would have 4 thirds pi 9 cubed. And that's going to get us 972 pi millimeters cubed. In number 8, a cylinder has a perimeter of 18 pi meters and a height of 11 meters. What is the volume of the cylinder? So remember that the volume of the cylinder, to find that, 
is base area times height, which is pi r squared times the height. So we need to know what our radius is. So if the perimeter is 18, 18 pi, we have 18 pi equals 2 pi r. We can divide by 2 pi on both sides. So we get our radius is 9. So we would have pi 9 squared times the height of 11. So we would get 891 pi millimeters cubed. In number 9, a cone has a volume of 144 yards cubed and a height of 27 yards. Find the radius of the base. So the volume of a cone is one-third the base area times the height. So we know that the volume is 144 pi. The base area is going to be pi r squared, and we know the height is 27. So we want to find the radius. So we know that one-third of 27 is 9. So 144 equals 9 pi r squared. We can divide by 9 pi on both sides. So when we do that, we get 16 is equal to r squared. Take the square root. So the radius is going to be 4 yards. In number 10, the perimeter has a base area of 20 millimeters squared and a height of 12 millimeters. Find the volume. So the volume is just base area times height. So 20 times 12 would get us 240 millimeters squared. In number 11, find the volume and give the exact area. So the volume of the prism here is still going to be base area times height. For the base area of a hexagon, it's one half apothem times perimeter. So to find our apothem, if the side is six, when we draw in our triangle, it splits into three and three. The top is a 30 degree angle, so the apothem is going to be the S root 3 side, which is 3 root 3. The perimeter, because each side is 6, and there are 6 sides, going to be 36. So we have 1 half times 3 root 3 times 36 times the height of 21. So put everything but the root 3 in your calculator, and we get 1,134 root 3 meters cubed. Number 12, we want to find the volume of the composite figure. So this has two shapes to it. It has a hemisphere and it has a cylinder with it. So if this is the radius uh, or the diameter of 10, the radius is 5. So we have the volume of the hemisphere plus the volume of the cylinder. So the volume of the hemisphere is 2 thirds pi r cubed. So we have 2 thirds pi 5 cubed plus the volume of the cylinder, which is base area times height. So it'd be pi 5 squared times 38. So we get 250 over 3 pi plus 950 pi. So when we add those together, we get 3,100 thirds pi meters cubed. In number 13, there's a rectangular room that is 11 by 14 and is 9 feet high. If each gallon covers 225 feet of paint, how many gallons of paint are needed? So, general area, which is perimeter times height. So the perimeter, if we have a room that's 11 by 14, we need to add those numbers together. So we would get 50 as our perimeter, and the height is 9. So that's going to be 450 feet squared. We need, we need to divide that by the coverage. So 450 divided by 225 is going to be 2 gallons of paint exactly. So we don't have to worry about rounding in this case.
In number 14, your ice cream cone is melting. The scoop of ice cream has a diameter of 6 centimeters. The cone has a radius of 3 centimeters and a height of 9. Will the cone hold all the ice cream or overflow? So, for the ice cream, that's a sphere, so we would have 4 thirds pi r cubed. So 4 thirds pi if the radius, if the diameter is 6, the radius is 3. So that's going to get us 36 pi. For the cone, we have 1 third base area times height. So we have 1 third pi 3 squared times 7. So that is going to get us 21 pi centimeters cubed. So in this case, the ice cream is going to be bigger than the cone, so it will overflow.